Hey guys, Volus C here, hope that you are doing good. Uh, lately I've been playing a lot of Tabletop Simulator Infinity, but I managed to catch up with one of my buddies over the weekend to play a live game in person with our actual miniatures, which is rare, I know. Um, he is known as What is Tactics on the forums, aka WIT, exclamation mark, question mark. Um, so you may know him, um, this time he is playing uh, Assassins, Assassin Baram. But um, he was also at that event that I was at recently where I was playing Combined Army with Avatar Kodali. Um, he was playing um, Avatar as well, and he came second, so he did very well at that event, much better than I did. Um, but I'll be facing him with my OSS, a list that I've been sort of practicing a little bit and a faction I've been studying on, um, uh, on Army 6 and playing a lot in Tabletop Simulator. Here it is. So you've got the Dakini Link with the Rudra, uh, Net Rods, there's a Naga Probot, Dazu, a couple of Lamids, uh, Shukra Lieutenant, Evo Repeater to give us to fire, and then there's the three proxies. So, let's start with the Rudra K1 Marksman Rifle. I can't tell you how much time I have spent staring at Army Builder, trying to decide whether I like the Rudra for 38 points better than... Parvati for 38 points. They are exactly the same cost and they can go in the link team of Dakinis. Which one is better overall? And I, I have trouble answering that. Parvati is very, very good. So let's start with her. The thing I like about Parvati is that she is there immediately to revive the Dakinis when they go down, which is something that the Mark 1 Engineer uh, does, but it means you don't have to take that Proxy Engineer if you've got Parvati, so you can free up a slot in your post humans for something else. I really love that about her. Secondarily, she's way more reliable at repairing, so when you're using your um, your Proxy or your Suffer Tech, you've got a good, very good chance, 75%, but um, with Parvati, it's even higher than that, so there's much less chance of you flubbing it and having to waste um, command tokens for rerolls or more orders. So I think that's a really big deal. Um, Parvati, she also shreds at close range um, with her two SMGs being in the link. Um, the Dakinis have the longer range bands covered. They've got that sorted. You've got a heavy machine gun, multi-sniper rifle, fully linked with assisted fire if you want it. Um, so uh, when it comes to short range though, they're not really as brutal, but Parvati uh, certainly is with that SMG. Um, what else did I like about her? I mean, I think she's got a couple of other little, little abilities here and there. I'm seeing uh, Super Jump, uh, Dodge plus three is really good. Um, she even has remote presence on herself. She's got structure points, tons of BTS against hacking. So um, pretty amazing. And a willpower 15 flash pulse, that's something the Link team doesn't really have. So Parvati is really amazing. I think some games I will run her. So why did I end up going with the Rudra instead? Let's talk about it. There's a couple of key things that I feel like I needed the Rudra for and I just couldn't let them go. So um, we're in an environment now where some people are just blatantly taking a tag and just putting it in partial cover and just watching a huge part of the table and not really feeling scared of anything. Well, um, the Dakinis are pretty good at outmatching it in the face-to-face -face role, but not as good at cutting through their armor. Even though you've got like five dice HMG damage 15, if you're up against just your own, just some um, a Guija or an enemy Marut or a um, a Raicho, heavy machine gun's going to take a really long to cut, a time to cut through that. Whereas the Rudra um, suddenly becomes way more scary because it's just reducing their armor to nothing effectively against damage 12. And for me, that's such a big deal in the current environment. I felt like I didn't want to go without that tool. Second reason why I just barely preferred the Rudra over Parvati in my list is that the Rudra brings a portable repeater with your team. So if you need to swap assisted fire from the Rudra to the Dakinis and back again or between the HMG and multi-sniper, you've got the repeater right there, even if they move out uh, way into the battlefield. Third thing is that repeater also um, synergizes with the investment I've made here in the Dazju Killer Hacker and Naga Regular Hacker. So they've got those two things providing the options uh, to actually take out uh, problematic things that may be ensconced in the midfield in, in, in total cover. So if the Dakinis and the Rudra can't get the shots in because they're behind some, some walls in a room or something like that, that, um, that repeater can potentially knock something out by putting... Um, uh, Oblivion onto it, or Trinity from the Dazu Killer Hacker, both very effective. So I like having that walking around with the Rudra. 
Um, the Rudra has Climbing Plus, which is just slightly more effective than Super Jump nowadays. With Parvati, you might be able to jump up and down and see on top of a building, um, but if it's quite a tall sort of cliff, if she can't make it up to the top in one go, she just can't get there at all, whereas the Rudra can move a short skill up the ledge and then another short skill because he's sticking to the side of it. So for those reasons, um, I'm just barely preferring the Rudra. We didn't even talk about the Mind Dispenser, also very handy. Um, heavy Pistol's nice. Uh, but overall, uh, Parvati is very, very good, and sometimes I'll run her instead. So that's what I wanted to say about that. Um, the proxy um, choices here, I think, just really are, are designed to fit around the rest of the list. As you can see here, I've got the Naga, Hacker, Dazu, Killer Hacker, Proxy Hacker, so plenty of hacking, and for me, I feel that that is there to uh, combine with uh, what I'm doing with the Rudra, um, sometimes playing quite aggressively with it. The Proxy Mark IV Heavy Rocket Launcher, extremely good because when he dies, he doesn't cost you a very vital order, one of your precious 15 orders, but he's very tough and the change to the crit mechanic helps him being in cover with, what is it, armor 5 plus the cover bonus. Um, and the Proxy 1 Engineer, you need that to revive your remotes or your Dakinis, even your net rods, to be honest, uh, and your Rudra. So that's why the list looks the way it does. Um, I also have a Marut list, which I think is even stronger than this. I just don't own the model for the Marut in real life yet. Um, by the way, if you guys have a, a Marut sitting around in your collection you don't need that you want to sell me at a low price, I will be extremely interested. So that's OSS. I will be up against uh, my uh, buddy here who's experimenting with a combination of assassin troopers. So first of all, the Fide. Um, just as good as ever, possibly even better than before. Um, very dangerous, especially since you'll have um, higher value targets to assassinate a lot of the time with people taking smaller and more compact lists. Um, very dangerous on that first turn run. Uh, still just as easy to, just as difficult to, to discover him. I don't believe that when you go up against combined army, you are down a level of impersonation. You start at the, the top level, which makes them better. The Asawera is one of the, the, the things that got the biggest buff uh, from Hakislam. You just look at him. I mean, 6-2 speed now, CC 23 with MA2, so way better in close combat. He has Berserk if he really wants it. Sometimes we'll actually use it. He's got Frenzy, but he's going to be in the link team. Um, amazing at dodging with Fizz 14, plus the extra speed for the dodging. Um, he can go on the link teams. Regeneration is a lot better, especially with Fizz 14 now. Got Stealth. Immunity to Shock, obviously, and the fact that he has an AP Spitfire rather than just a normal Spitfire is golden. And you can make him the Lieutenant because you'll have the Farzan Chain of Command most times as well. This is an approximation of what my opponent actually took. I don't think this is his exact specific list. I will have to ask him if he wants to provide it, but this is just my best guess as to what I remember. Ghulam Doctor, beautiful for reviving other members of the Link team. This is a Ghulam Link, but there's only one Ghulam because everybody else is just sort of wildcarding themselves in there, to, so to speak. Muyib, tactical awareness for the whole team, excellent. Um, I know that he took a Breed Killer Hacker. I just can't remember if he took the regular Hacker as well. I think he did, but I'm not 100% sure. These guys um, bring that um, hacking clout to the field and hacking um, such an important element of N4. I really agree with these choices. He's taken the new Shu J. I just can't remember which profile he took. I mean, I would have taken this profile, but I don't know what, what one he would have preferred. Uh, very nice little specialist in there. Some really good stats. Good for supplies, which is the mission we'll be playing. Farzan, again, if the uh, Sawira goes down, but also good for picking up supply crates. Um, one questionable choice he's made here is he's taken the Govard, intending to duo with Lila Sharif, and that's the one thing in his list which I think is the weakest. Um, the Govard in the active turn, MSV1, HMG, still okay, but doesn't have armor piercing, and he's just a BS12 guy. Um, we'll see in this game why that can be an issue. You're kind of risking him a bit if you're going up against just some sort of TR bot or a sniper in the distance trying to take out a Noctifer. Um, it can get a little bit awkward if you just happen to get a little bit unlucky, and I just don't feel like he's got quite the clout. I'd prefer to see an HMG in the main link to back them up. Um, Flashball Spot, he's only taken a single Gaza Mateo. I'm relieved not to have to come up against four of them all the time. He's even gone for the most expensive version, just because he wants to have um, all of the tools, BSG, um, Jammer, and Smoke Grenades. But he's paying 10 points for it, so I'm, I'm really happy to see that. Uh, a couple of Dale Armies, not the infiltrating ones, just wants to have a couple of dudes at the back with Panzerfaust and Irregular Orders, can't blame him. 
And the new NAD here, uh, a unit that I'm not very familiar with, but it's almost like a, a poor man's Nocta for it. It just sits in hidden deployment and then suddenly Panzerfausts you. Uh, with Mimetism minus six. Uh, this seems like a really good trooper. I would definitely recommend people look into these guys. Um, looks like they are availability two in um, Assassins. I would take at least one, if not two, because they seem very, very good. All right, let's go into the bat rep now. Um, we'll go through it. The mission is supplies, as I mentioned. Let's get the webcam down a little bit smaller. Over here, let's make it about there. So a bit of a dark photo to begin with, but um, my opponent wins the roll for uh, initiative and chooses to take the first turn, so I'll be sitting up on this side of the table. Um, this is a table that I, I put together myself. Um, you might remember me complaining about uh, some of the tables uh, from that event I was at previously. This one's not nearly as bad, but I did leave the deployment zones a little bit sparse. Uh, the main reason why this table is better, though, is it's got a couple of big pieces of terrain in the center blocking line of sight between the deployment zones. That allows you to avoid engagements with enemy snipers and link teams if you want to, which is crucial. Um, sorry, this photo is actually of my opponent's deployment because given that he went straight for first turn, he has to set up first. So we have this guy here, which was, what was it again, the Shujay? Is that what he's called? The Shujay? No, that's the, um, yeah, uh, the Shujay is the specialist, right. Um, and then he's got the Ghazi right behind it, the Farzans out in the midfield, there's a Dalami to the right-hand side over here. Uh, then the main link team is centralized there with the Bereeds, the Asawira, Gulam, the Muyib. Um, on the, uh, the stairs over here, that's where he'll have his duo of Alila and the Gulam. So let's get a little bit of a brighter photo happening. Um, so in the midfield, you can see that's the concentration of the core link team just down the bottom right and in the middle you've got the Govard HMG represented by Jambazan and Lila Sharif there on the left hand side you've got another one of these um, uh, Daylami Panzerfausts yep so he's just putting prone markers down on everything he's got some sort of flashball spot prone on a building over there um, just above where the link team is situated more of a close up on where his Ghazi material is behind the Shuje represented by um, Lucien Van Swarza whatever his face is for me, taking a hidden deployment verification photo of my um, Dazu. Dazu hanging out uh, just in, um, in close proximity to the left-hand uh, objective from my perspective. Just putting him there to either shotgun somebody that tries to pick up the box, or if he doesn't go for that objective this turn, I'll grab it quickly and run away. This uh, objective is being watched over by one of my flash pull spots. My link team setting up on the um, the far right hand corner of my deployment zone. Let's take a look at them. Just going to make this even smaller. So I've got a baggage bot here. That's quite handy um, with this um, uh, this um, flashball spot prone, just to provide a really good repeater network to get my um, my assistive fires going on. The HMG is the link leader. He will be connected to the Rudra on this side, uh, the sniper on this side, the CSU over here who rolls up plus. I can't even remember what he got since I didn't spend any orders on the CSU for the entire game. So let's forget about the meta chemistry. There's also a Dakini tack bot on the side here. Um, the fact that remotes can go prone now in this edition, unlike N3, is one of the biggest buffs to OSS. The fact that they can deploy in more convenient locations, just camp in other spots around the battlefield, and not be too restricted to where you could deploy them actually helps out significantly if you're an experienced player. Um, further afield to them, this is just in front of them, there's the Naga hacker prone behind here, just ready to either hack something that's hacking that, that's going to pick up the box objective, or to move out himself and grab the box later in the game if needed. You can see the enemy Farzan towards the midfield um, from this photo also. My left hand side here, this um, flash bot is standing up, it's not prone, ready to uh, flash its way towards the middle of the battlefield. Note that the, uh, the Daz using hidden deployment around about there. This is the Evo repeater, just hiding in the corner there. It's got plenty of repeaters to use. It's assisted fire, net rod landing on the left, and my lieutenant just prone on the stairs back in my deployment zone. Honestly, you should have found a slightly safer, safer place to hide him. Um, and I also note that he was not one of the reserve troopers, and my opponent picked up on that as well. He thought oh, I was a bit bold there because um, usually what he does is he tries to deploy his FIDE as his reserve trooper and try and hunt down the enemy lieutenant. But here's the important tactical thing, the strategic thing. If I lose my lieutenant at uh, turn one, that's probably the best time for the lieutenant to die. 
because um, if I'm not really doing anything with my turn one, I'm not too worried. I'm really just setting up arrows onto the middle objectives, which are quite um, uh, quite exposed, really. And then in turns two and three, those are the more important ones for getting the objectives back and um, making a counterattack. So I don't actually mind if he spends his orders using the Fide to destroy the Shukra, because that means he won't be picking up the boxes. I can then simply counterattack, choose a new lieutenant, put stuff on ARO, and win later in the game, potentially. Another uh, net rod nearby to the link team this is a photo showing the mid ground of the deployment zone. And uh, there's a upper sort of look here. So what's happened is my opponent has deployed this impersonation marker represented by some sort of weird Pokemon. Uh, my response is to put uh, my uh, Mark II post human right here on the stairs, meaning that he won't be able to move up the stairs because uh, that's blocked, so that protects my link team. Um, I do have a Dakini over here, so if he comes around to attack this side, I am in trouble, but I do have the chance to defend with my Dakini um, combi rifle. He's pretty good at doing that with six cents. And worst case scenario, I lose the Dakini, the uh, Baggage Bot, the HMG, and the Rudra around the other side, but he's gonna have to work quite hard to achieve that. I'm gonna be able to spotlight the Fide as, he, as soon as he reveals, because he's near a repeater. I'll definitely be trying to make him work for it. I've also put the um, Heavy Rocket Launcher up the top here, just there to take some hits. Do doesn't really matter if he dies. He can actually see the Fide as well, so gets a free discover with Whip 15 as the Fide moves around the corner. Um, so that's that. Um, and uh, who else was it? Yeah, there's also the proxy post human engineer uh, on the top of the roof, but she's going to be pretty safe because she's defended by the other proxies. So my opponent begins the turn by moving up the Fide. I've spent a command token to reduce the orders that the uh, Fide, uh, for the pool the Fide was in. Moves around here just to the edge and um, then uh, places a mine uh, very close. I'm actually taking advantage of this to dodge, although the Fide has stealth, my link team has six cents. So I'm trying to dodge the uh, combo rifle closer just to uh, force the engage around about this spot um, so that he's not sort of constantly moving around getting run and gun moves to get towards the heart of things where he might be able to take out the HMG and the Rudra. So Dakini Tackbot does get over there. He then does place a mine. This gives me the opportunity to uh, put targeted on him um, with one of the hackers. I can't remember whether, whether I succeeded at that or not or whether I even bothered. But uh, yeah, because uh, the Naga and the um, the Proxy are both in market state, so I think I decided to forego that. But a mine does go down, but the Dukini is able to dodge into a position where he can actually see the Fide, which means that later on when the Fide um, uh, acts again, and this is like his um, his third order now, Fide moves around, um, the Dukini will set off the mine when he responds, um, but the thing is the Dakini can now shoot at the Fide who is not in marker state, no surprise attack, not that he cares about that anyway, and the Fide will have to go for the combi rifle and the bot behind him. The mine goes off and will hit the bot uh, in front, the Dakini, and the pro bot behind, but it's up to the Fide to now choose whether to fire um, the boarding shotgun with the template mode that hits automatically, but he'll get hit, hit on normal rolls or whether to contest me with his um, his double slugs at plus six to hit. Now this is an important mo moment in the game. My opponent decided to fire at the Dakini with his actual dice, so plus six to hit with the slugs. This, I feel like, is a pretty important mistake, and we'll discuss it again later in the game, but let's just break down the numbers now. If the Fide dies here, the run's over, and if I lose a Dakini, um, my sniper rifle standing up in the building is going to be less effective, but the Fide is not going to be able to get any more damage done this turn. If he fires the uh, templates, I've got to take two saves on the Dakini, and the bot behind him is unlikely to pass the dodge. If the dodge has failed, he's very unlikely to survive. Um, plus, we're talking you know, the mine going off as well. So that's the trade there. My opponent said later the only reason he's doing this is to cripple that one Dakini so that he, then he can fire his HMG at my, um, my Dakini sniper further up and I won't get the link team bonus. But if that was his goal, surely you just want to trade the Fide here by dropping the templates. So he does go with the slugs. Bear in mind the Fide is, I think, a ballistic skill 12. We'll just, um, just jump up and confirm that. He's ballistic skill 11. So plus six to hit from the shotgun takes him to 17s, minus three to hit from the mimetism of the Dakini, back to 14s on two dice. But the Dakini is ignoring any surprise attacks. He's blistered skill 11, plus three for the link, plus three for range. 
17s on two dice. So the Dakini is actually likely to beat the Fide in the face-to-face -face roll. And the Dakini might even pass the uh, mind save if my opponent's real, really unlucky. So what ended up happening here is a disaster for the Fide. The, um, the, mine, the, the bot at the back rolled low and dodged the mine. The Dakini tanked the armor save from the combi rifle, sorry, from the, the mine, and actually beat the Fide in the face-to-face -face roll, as he was likely to, and the Fide now dies. So my opponent spent about four orders here and lost himself a model for it. This uh, puts me way ahead in the game. Um, he's done very little damage here. He has to contend with my uh, multi-sniper with the five-man link. Yes, my opponent got a little bit unlucky here, but I do feel like um, if you've got yourself into this position and you've seen the Dakini firing the combi rifle at you, I think the best bet would be to just make sure he dies by uh, dropping uh, both of those um, shotgun templates on him. That's how I feel. My opponent then decides to go after the uh, the multi-sniper with his, his Govard HMG, and again, um, I disagree with having an HMG on a fairly low-level guy by himself without any link bonuses. Yes, you're ignoring this, the mimetism on the sniper, but we're talking five dice, sorry, we're talking four dice on 12s versus two dice on 17s because the Dakini sniper is in a link team. Sorry. Two dice on 14s because the Dakini um, isn't ignoring cover. He doesn't have assisted fire. Four dice 12s, two dice 14s. It's a little bit risky, isn't it? It's a little bit dangerous. And if you take down that sniper, um, he can just be revived by the engineer later. Whereas on this side, uh, the Gulam Doctor is not really very close to the Govard. So that's problematic. Unfortunately for my opponent, just having the worst first turn, the Sniper does indeed beat him, and the Govard does just drop down lifelessly, so he's lost his Fide, lost his Govard, spent a bunch of orders, hasn't picked up any supply crates, very bad start, but he is going to recover later, so don't you guys worry, don't switch off the video. My opponent moving out now with his Link Team, importantly to get the Asawira in range of this guy here, the Rocket Launcher. Luckily, Asawira doing a much better job. He is BS-17. The post human does have cover for him being up a bit higher, but that is an AP Spitfire, and that's why AP is so important, to deal with idiots like this. And the Asawira finally getting something done, just shredding this guy in one volley. So he at least has removed a post human, but that hasn't hit my order pool at all, which is one of the wonderful things about post humans, and why they're still as good as ever. Okay, so he's forgotten to use his Impetuous for the uh, Motiwa, but uh, she is just crawling into a spot behind his low wall. The Link team goes back and hides because he doesn't want to lose them. And uh, very little else accomplished here. He is moving his Farzan on the bottom left into a better position. Daylami is also repositioning and just really waiting out the rest of the turn. So it comes straight over to me here, and I'm pretty much on 15 orders. Um, I'm deciding to move out with my Mark II Posthuman Hacker, and it is moving towards this um, objective on my right-hand side. Moves around, uh, goes and grabs the, um, the box, and is going to be returning. Um, just doing a zoom out here. Um, so what's happened is that the proxy, very blurry photo of it, is down here. It has moved to the objective. It has passed the roll to pick the objective up. It's moving back with the supply crate. We've got this little blue gem to represent the objective um, having been recovered. And my opponent has chosen right now to reveal this person. The, uh, what, is he, what is this called? The Nadhir. The Nadhir. BS-12 Panzerfaust coming his way. Now again, this is a little bit risky, but this is a good play. It's the correct play. You want to try and hit your opponent's model out in the midfield before it's run away and hidden with the supply crate. Um, it's just a bit tough because the post human is minus six mimetism. So the net here will need to hit on a nine. Very easy to whiff this shot. Um, and then the post human can simply try and dodge it. Post human to check the fizz, fizz 13. So he's got one dice on a nine. I've got one dice on a 13. I do manage to dodge this. In fact, I failed the dodge, but he whiffed it. So, um, this wasn't extremely lucky for me. So far, we've got three important events. The Fide versus the Combi Rifle. Odds were that I would win that. Odds weren't really the case that I would pass the armor save on the mine. So the um, Dakini Combi Rifle got lucky. That was one order in which I did get lucky. The Govard HMG on 12s versus the Sniper on 14s. I won that. He was slightly favored, but it was a pretty even shootout. 
This one, again, I was actually favoured. I did manage to pull it off. So, again, first game round going very, very well for me. What this means is my, um, after considering whether you use the Dakinis to do it, or um, this model here, I decided to use the Naga Hacker. One reason is that I've already uh, grabbed the box from this objective, so he's not as strong on this side of the board anymore. Secondarily, the range band is positive for me on the combi raffle, but not for his Panzerfaust. And it will mean that I'm actually hitting him with surprise attack. So up against my cover, mimetism and surprise attack, good range from my combi. He decides to dodge, but doesn't pull it off. The Naga does successfully nail the, um, the Huxlam Trooper here. And I'm using orders and group one to recamo him and put him prone. This is before I've um, put the prone marker down. He did go prone. And then the post human can move all the way back around here and hide. Note that this is the um, Asparis model. I didn't have an appropriate model for my proxy mark two, so the Apsara is Aspara is actually filling in for us. With more orders in group one, the Dazu moves over. Um, it is seen by his Farzan, but he doesn't want to reveal his Farzan because he knows he's just going to get boarding shotgunned if that happens. If he shotguns me, well, I've got NWI, he doesn't. The Dazu is very likely to win that, so he correctly decides not to reveal himself, especially since I, I believe he's a Ch Chain of Command Trooper, doesn't really want to lose that. So Dazu is able to go prone, grab the box with a very high willpower, and then start running away. And um, the plan is, after taking it from that box there, moving all the way back to this spot, moving up the stairs where I'll be in total cover, and then hiding, and importantly, going back into marker state. Going back into marker state means he drops the box, so if I forget to, to pick it up later in the game, I could lose because of that. But if I don't go back into marker state, he can move his Bereed Killer Hacker over here and kill my Dazu very easily, and I don't want that. I want to um, re-camo, so that's exactly what happens, and then... Back over here, we've got a little bit of reshuffling. Um, I believe I didn't have enough orders to put assisted fire on the Dakini Sniper, which is a big deal. Um, having assisted fire on him going into the following game rounds would uh, be very helpful, but I absolutely need needed the orders to get the post human back into cover. Arguably, um, one play I could have made is to, to leave the post human out there. He could shoot the post human and grab the box, but having assisted fire on this might have actually been better because the post human would then have at least had a chance to dodge away here and he would have spent his order, had to spend his orders moving over and grab, grabbing the box, which surely would have been covered by the sniper anyway. So that's a big maybe, but I ended up going with the, the, the hiding the post human to be sure. All right, my opponent has a um, Panzerfaust guy over here. I believe I had like one order left. I decided to try and discover him and shoot him. I can't remember how that turned out. I think that he managed to survive this one. So, um, Hassassin's turn two. Uh, he does remember the Impetuous at this point. Um, Ghazi moves up, goes to throw the smoke, but crucially fails the attempt to throw it. So my opponent's having a, a quite an unlucky game. He uh, said to me he really could have done with that smoke there and not have to spend any more orders because uh, he wanted to flip the irregular to use it for something else, so that was unlucky. We now have a very bold move, though. The link team is uprooting and moving out. We've got the Asawira in front, Ghulam Doctor behind him, a couple of Bereeds, and the um, Muyib HRL, who can luckily use his heavy rocket launcher. My opponent's lost a bunch of orders, but still has a lieutenant's order, still has the, uh, the HRL, still has plenty of... Uh, resources to go. So these guys are moving to go after my Dazu. He's spent the additional order from the, um, the, the Ghazi, puts the smoke down in the midfield. That's going to block the sniper. The link team uproot, they move out through to here. They're going to move out around here. And here is their target, this guy here, the Dazu. So we're going to see how that turns out, but it's going to take some effort for them to get there. Note that the Dazu can reveal reactively to hack the Bereeds once they come in range, but they'll be able to hack him back. That's going to be a bit of a problem. We'll see how that turns out. Their first obstacle is this uh, flashbot that I've left over here reactively to go after his um, his troops. But the Asawira does mow that down effortlessly and then just moves on. So I've, I've, made, I've maybe saved a couple of inches worth of speed, but that's about it. He then moves his troops through. Now, knowing that he is going to just kill this Dazu at some point, I figure that if the Asawira is going to be the link leader, I may as well at some point just reveal and get a free kill. That's going to drop the potency of the link team down a little bit. And um, when it becomes his turn, I might even be able to get a, a lucky win on the face-to-face -face roll when he tries to Trinity me. I do have um, NWI as well, so if he does go for that trade-off, I might you know, force him to spend a couple of orders doing it. 
So as he moves up here, this is the crucial one. We realized that from ground level, there's too much terrain in the way for the Dazu, uh, sorry, the Dakini sniper to see his link team. But once he comes up and over this box, his silhouette becomes just tall enough to see the Dazu. I keep calling it a Dazu. It's a Dakini multi-sniper and a link team without assisted fire. Um, so there will be a shootout. I decided at this point because the, um, the Asuera is going to come in range anyway and is going to be able to get up and over. I decided that because this is the link leader, if he's moving up to the to the top here, I may as well reveal the Dazu and try and kill his hacker at the back. Um, so that's a really great opportunity. Um, it means that I can actually go straight for his killer, killer hacker and, um, and, and um, annihilate that first. He has to contend with my sniper. If he doesn't kill it, I'll have another arrow. So it's the perfect time to spring that. I felt, felt like that was the correct play. So here we go over here. The crucial piece of terrain is actually um, this uh, box over here because um, this uh, building is actually kind of low. But the sniper does indeed have line of sight to his Asuera. So we have a bit of a shootout. He's hitting me on 14s. He's got fully linked, good range band. He's up against cover. The mimetism cancels his link team bonus effectively. So five dice on 14s, but the sniper's going straight back out on him. Also on 14s with good range band for the sniper. So um, luck continues here, and the sniper actually manages to fend off the Asuera in that shootout. Neither of us dying, but... He unfortunately and frustratingly didn't take down the sniper. Um, what this does mean though is he can actually get up and over. Um, I can't remember whether he, he used this uh, a failed guts check or something to get past the sniper, but I do remember him moving into close combat to going up to go after the um, the the Dazu here. Note that the hacker on the ground level has been destroyed by a Trinity. Things continuing to go well for me this game, just consistently. Uh, getting the important face-to-face -face roles going my way, but now he is in close combat with me So the best I can really do here is try and dodge or fire my boarding shotgun point blank as we are extremely good in close combat Is able to take down the Dazu um, Unfortunately though for him to get back around and go and hide and note that he hasn't picked up the box yet He is gonna have to be continuing to go after my sniper He feels that he can get me and I think he he is right to think that but throughout this turn, the Asuera just doesn't manage to beat the Sniper. The Sniper does in fact get a wound on him, and he's forced to sort of just drop back down. He did have a Lieutenant's Order to go up there as well. Um, I do note also that um, during the Link Team move, he's moved one of the Bereeds up here just to um, fish for the objective. He sent the other models, the um, uh, Muyib and the Gulam, this way because he's thinking of just going up and killing my Lieutenant later. And the Asuera is just hanging behind this little bit of cover in this very cinematic and very important firefight between uh, him and the Dakini. And cannot believe it, he just by the end of the turn doesn't manage to kill that Dakini sniper. Dakini sniper just too, too solid. What he is able to do though is he's able to creep up on this Shukra with his team. And the Shukra is using its dodge to move around here just to make sure that they use the maximum number of orders to kill him. Um, so they come around here and pile in. And um, they get to a point where, um, in the very last order of the turn, one of them is able to jump up and over, getting sniped by the by the um, uh, the Dakini as it goes up there. But he's able to try and go after the Shukra. And my opponent, continually getting unlucky here, doesn't quite get him because the Shukra is just able to dodge away from him. He's laying down the shotgun, and the Shukra just barely managing to survive, which is just shocking. I want to just put out a bit of a spoiler here and say that in the in the following turn my opponent does manage to take out the shukra which is really interesting so i go into loss of lieutenant for my third and final turn but i'm lost not in loss of lieutenant for the for the turn that's about to follow this i actually said to him at the time i would probably rather be in loss of lieutenant in turn two rather than turn three because turn three is the crucial one we can actually go and grab the boxes back but Here's how it happens. The Shukra manages to live through this somehow, and the Sniper is able just to continue his uh, reign of terror this turn and take down his um, his Gulam or his Muyib or whatever it was he used to get in there. And my opponent just runs out of orders. So, um, feeling like, you know, how could I possibly get any luckier? Uh, we go into OSS turn two. Assisted fire is put up on the Rudra uh, because the Rudra has a repeater. 
it is now able to leave the link team and move out and just gun these people down. There's like a Muyib, there's um, there's an Asuera sitting around. So we're moving through and we're just shooting at them. The Ghulam is uh, dodging his way up the stairs. So it does take me a couple of orders, but eventually I do fire the K1 uh, marksman here with um, assisted fire, knocking him out. And that'll allow me to go after his Asawira. Asawira, by the way, regenerates an, uh, a wound that he'd taken at the end of the turn um, with his regeneration ability. So um, although the Dakini had um, caused him to bleed, he's regened the, the wound. I also am able to move around with my um, Dakini HMG, who is in a link team and is able to shoot at the Asawira, but it's my opponent's t uh, time to swing a little bit of luck back, and the Asawira manages to dodge away. I think he gets a crit dodge or something, and the Asawira is able to just move around and hide. I can then use the position to bring in the Rudra and shoot further afield, uh, with the Asawira having gone this way behind the, um, the, the crates here. The Rudra can now move up and just start firing at this Burid over here because I don't want him camping this objective. So that's quite important, Rudra eventually going after him. And then it's a matter of trying to hunt down this guy here uh, because he, he might go after my lieutenant. So the bot continuing to move around, we've got this beautiful shot here where it's K1 against Asawira. I've got a couple of wounds to spare in armor 4. The K1's going to cut through his armor 4. So eventually, with enough bullets, the Rudra is able to gun him down, which I'm feeling really good about. Uh, the Rudra, unfortunately, though, is too fat to fit on the stairwell there and is not going to be able to pick up the box. So what happens is the Rudra uses Climbing Plus to go up on top of the building, and I'm switching. Um, I've got some orders in the other group. I think the Shukra is in the other group. Uh, let's just have a quick look. Yeah, so Shukra's in group two, meaning that with his Stratagos and everything, I can spend the orders from group two now, moving out and heading over here. And the, the plan is just to end up there. He's going to be guarded by the Rudra. He's going to pick up the supply crate. It'll be my suit two supply crates to his one, and I'll have a turn after this. So that's the strategy here. Shukra moving and moving and moving and moving, and we're running out of orders here where he just goes prone um, just there, um, picking up the supply crate with the Rudra up the top. Um, link team uh, just repositioning and reforming a little bit. Um, there are only a four-man sniper link team now because the Rudra has left them. So my opponent um, making this sort of last gasp dash, moving around here. I believe this is um, his Delami. We had an impetuous um, Ghazi Moti. We're here putting smoke down to block the sniper. And then, um, so you, you can see the, the Ghazi just being gunned down, down by the sniper from there. I think that he managed to throw a smoke first or throw it somewhere that it wasn't going to block the sniper so he could get it down. And then we have the, the really big play, and that is for the Farzan, who was camped out on the other side of this building, to walk all the way around. And he's able to avoid the Rudra, because the Rudra is actually prone, prone flat on the ground. And the Farzan is able to come in close to the Shukra and, um, and gun him down point, point blank with a couple of shotguns. I'm trying to lash out with like a nanopulsor so that he can't pick up the supply crate, but my opponent survives that. Finally time to get a little bit of good luck going back his way and does nail the Shukra and picks up the supply crate. Beautiful play here. Note that I can finally reveal, or I've got my, my hackers revealed already, I can finally use the repeater here to put targeted on the Farzan, which is a big deal. And I want you guys to start getting used to the fact that having repeaters mid midfield for that reactive spotlight starts to become a bigger and bigger big uh, big deal in um, N4. And um, I'm starting to employ this tactic a lot more, and I think you guys might start to appreciate the benefits as well after you start seeing that plus three to hit uh, continually recurring in your games. In fact, if I had a missile bot, this would be very easy because in my following turn, I just shoot the Farzan. Bear in mind though, the Lieutenant is dead. Okay, so my opponent's setting up a couple of uh, Dale Army Panzerfaust and also moving his Shujay over here to go and uh, grab the objective in the center. Just barely able to avoid the sniper's position because there's like a pixel here that I can't see on the side of the uh, objective. And um, picks up the second supply crate. So now he has two supply crates. I only have one. I do have a whole turn left, but I am a lost lieutenant, so he's made the game quite close. However, what I'm able to do is move the Dakini Sniper from this position to this position. That allows me to get line of sight onto his Shujay here. The Sniper, um, very good odds to kill him and does so. So that's at least a draw secured because I've got this supply crate over here and he's just got his Farzan. My Rudra moving out and moving around, but not before I put assisted fire on him. 
um, and we're using this this um, makeshift uh, terrain stand here to just show that he's using climbing plus to stand up, come out over the wall, and come around this side so we can just see onto the stairwell. There is a Panzerfaust set up in the distance that fires from long range and actually blows up the Rudra, so I don't get a second attempt at this. But the Rudra at point blank with the, um, I can't remember whether I used the heavy pistol or the marksman rifle, does shoot at the Farzan, but he is targeted, plus three to hit, and the Farzan does go down. So rather than me having a draw, it's a victory because that's one supply crate to zero at the end. Uh, the Rudra can't pick it up because he's dead, but that is the end of the game. Um, I actually can't remember whether the, Rudra, whether the Rudra did that or not. The Rudra, I believe, might have flubbed it, but I had the second order coming in from the HMG, and I think that might actually have been the killing blow to um, fire at him. So the, the HMG, even more likely to do it because he's got the positive range ban. So with targeted, that ends up securing it. So game over. Um, let's just do a bit of a recap. Was I luckier than my opponent this game? Absolutely. Um, there were a lot of things that just consistently went my way. Rather than me winning sort of uh, like 5 out of 10 of the coin flips, it sort of felt like I was winning like 8 out of 10 of the coin flip shootouts. My opponent got very unlucky with his um, Asuera shooting me, with his Fide, a lot of the armor saves, the Govard... Um, the Gazumoti were throwing smoke grenades. He did get a little bit, a bit lucky in some positions to pull it back. I mean, I had some whip check fails picking up objects, objectives. His Farzan did very well against the Shukra at the end there. That was not a given. Um, his um, Asawira managed to pull off a lot of dodges in, um, in his reactive turn. So there were moments where he was pulling it back. But overall, I got a bit luckier. The game, I think, would have been way closer um, were it not for that. Did I play better overall? Hard to say. I feel like I played the first turn better. He made some mistakes in the first game round, but he made some very good strong plays um, in the later parts of the game. I'm pretty. I'm feeling pretty happy with my list. It's a very solid list. I think that the Marut list is even better than this, but this is very solid. I am going to try Parvati some of the time, but the Rudra is decent. Um, I, I unlinked him from the team this game because I, I needed him to get to a spot where the link team were going to have trouble getting to, and he performed quite well on his own. But there are going to be some games where that Rudra in the link um, definitely is going to be carving up. And hey, some games where I might not even want to take the Rudra or Parvati. May want to invest somewhere else. But feeling happy with OSS. Um, the pro, uh, the remotes being able to go prone is a really big deal. post Germans allowing you to have more than 15 guys on the field is a really big deal. Hacking's amazing in N4. Um, this list and faction is very good against hacking. Netrods have been significantly buffed. Um, Dakinis if you want. I mean, I had a list where I was putting the Apsara that buffs them and assisted fire stacks on top of it. So you can be hitting on like 19s with your HMG on five dice. It's pretty nutty. So give these guys a go. OSS very strong at the moment, um, but very enjoyable game all round and feel, um, feel happy to get lucky uh, occasionally. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.